Okay, in this segment, we're going to cover our uh, last model in inventory management, the single period model. This is a very, very important model and maybe the mostly uh, used model in real life um, because it tackles two uh, very important issues which are very uh, realistic issues. The first one is that it tackles uncertainty in demand. And the second is that it tackles um, a certain type of product called the perishable product. So let's uh, learn about this model. Okay, so to understand the aspect of single period model uh, or the importance uh, mainly of this model and its strength, let me take you back to uh, remember a little bit the EOQ model which is the basic model where demand is assumed to be known and at a constant rate uh, which um, explains this straight line right when we uh, stock a certain level of uh, inventory here Q um, here we go that was our Q and we were depleting our inventory at a constant rate um, because everything is known in the EOQ model, we receive our new shipment here just when we have almost nothing on hand. And here virtually it's nothing on hand, right? Uh, which would minimize uh, our cost. And these cycles repeat again and again. All right, let's see what happens if, let's say, for some reason demand did not follow that black line but it follows now the red line so when we receive our new shipment in here what do we have here this quantity is a quantity that we have now on hand when we receive our new shipment is it a problem no we'll simply receive the new shipment and instead of reaching this level again our quantity uh, our order quantity Q, now we have it up to here. What's the problem? It's not a problem at all, right? Because the EOQ model applies for types of products that sells continuously. So all what we'll do is to continue as normal. Now, if we see that these surpluses that we are facing at the end of every cycle all right, uh, are repeating, then we can revise our order quantity. It's not a big deal. Or we revise now our knowledge for the demand. If we see that this demand is changing, it's, uh, it's different from the black line that we have seen here. All right. Now, these cycles, okay, make it easy for us to tackle these changes because, as we said, um, whatever could not be sold in one cycle now we can uh, sell it in the second cycle however this condition is not applicable for all products yes we have many products where this applies but some products for some products this is not applicable we call these product perishable what what do we mean by perishable um, Honestly, perishable, uh, many uh, people think that um, the product cannot be used anymore or um, um, deteriorate. But this is not uh, uh, true for all kinds of products that we consider in our inventory models. If you want, we can uh, simply think about a perishable product that is a product that can be sold during a limited period of time. I'm going to explain later why. Why I'm, uh, why I'm saying that it's not necessarily that the product will deteriorate. Um, I, I, will, uh, I will come back to this point later. So wh what's important here is that now we are dealing with products that can be sold during a limited period of time. And we will call this uh, uh, limited period of time selling season. All right. Now, a selling season can be of different magnitudes. It can be in hours, days, weeks, and even a few months. 
And again, I will uh, come back to this, what kind of product that we are calling perishable uh, can be sold for in a few months. We'll talk about this. Now, the examples of perishable products, I'm sure you, you, you have seen all these products and maybe you did not think about them as perishable until now. Bread, okay, uh, fruits and vegetables, flowers, cakes, uh, ready cakes, uh, sandwiches that are sometimes uh, um, sold in um, either cafeterias or uh, sometimes in supermarkets, right? They are already prepared and kept in the fridge waiting for customers to come and pick them up. Uh, some also supermarkets, they sell ready salads, right? For people who want to have a, a light lunch, etc. And finally, we have the fashion products all right um, and this is what i was referring to when i said some perishable products can have uh, a few months in their selling season um, so i'm talking about fashion products and this is also the kind of product that i was referring to when i said when i say perishable that does not mean that product deteriorate fashion product can be sold for a limited period of time simply because the fashion will change right so um, a store that stock up some uh, some uh, clothing that's now in fashion uh, maybe next uh, spring he cannot sell it because the fashion changed so this is why fashion products um, fall under this category of perishable product and many uh, research has been done using the single period model uh, to apply it on fashion products. Finally, the uncertainty in demand here during the selling season makes it very hard for us to uh, determine what's the optimal uh, stock level or the optimal inventory level that we have to keep before the selling season. And this is why we have to learn uh, this very, very important model, the single period model. Okay, so let's see the mechanics of the single period model, um, how the uncertainty in demand and the perishability will affect our ordering policy or the inventory policy. Okay, so uh, because of the selling season issue, let's first uh, show a timeline here and where we have a, a selling season, which is um, which happens only uh, at a um, certain or a very um, narrow or very limited uh, segment of time. Okay, so this is when selling season will happen, and during the selling season, demand is uncertain. So before the selling season, we anticipate demand. Okay, we forecast demand or we estimate what the demand would be, but we will never be able to uh, uh, to ensure what what level of demand we're going to face. So based on our calculation or estimation, we build up an inventory. Okay, we order the quantity that we need from the supplier and we have here our inventory ready for us. So we hold an inventory based on the policy that we have in mind. Now, now uh, during the selling season, we will have a realized demand. Okay, it's not anticipated anymore uh, because we have we are observing it and we deplete our inventory we sell from our stock right so in in this illustration i'm showing that uh, demand stopped at this level and we we end up with that level on hand so let's see what happens uh, after the selling season okay let's if you want evaluate our policy our decision to hold that much of inventory. Um, before that, just a, a, quick, a very important note that replenishment during the selling season is not important because otherwise uh, um, the logic that I'm showing you here in this illustration then would not be applicable because uh, if replenishment was, uh, was uh, uh, 
possible, then um, if I'm running out of, of stock, then I, I simply uh, place another order with my supplier and I will not have any problem. But for different uh, reasons, we assume that replenishment is not possible. And trust me, this is very, very realistic assumption. So let's assess our policy. After the selling season is done, we uh, check out what inventory we have now on hand. So this is showing the inventory that we had on hand before the selling season. And that was the demand, right? This is now uh, the empty uh, part of our uh, stock level. Here we go. And what's that? This is the surplus inventory. Okay, it's a surplus inventory. But we also may have another uh, scenario, which is this. So what if demand was larger, okay, was larger than uh, what we had on hand? Because you see, this is what we had on hand, that much. And demand was more than that. So what do we call that extra uh, part? So if I wanted, in fact, to um, satisfy all the demand, I should have held that much of inventory, see, with the uh, dashed red lines. So what do we call this missing part? This is what we call the shortage uh, quantity. This is what we could not, this is the part of the demand that we could not satisfy. All right, now, which scenario is better for us? In fact, we cannot answer this question. It's not that simple. Because if we have a surplus inventory, um, we will be incurring what we call an excess cost. What's the excess cost? You see, all that inventory that's left in our uh, uh, stock, then in some cases we have to completely, uh, we have to completely um, uh, discard it. Okay, which is a, a very high cost for us. Now, if we have a shortage here, also there's a shortage cost. What's that cost? In a very uh, simple way, um, the shortage will the shortage cost would be simply that profit that we lost because we could not satisfy that extra in uh, that extra demand or that demand because we did not have enough inventory. So. We can uh, reduce the excess cost by uh, reducing the order quantity or the inventory level, but this will put us under more risk of a shortage cost and the same way apply for a shortage cost. So here we have a balance that we are not really sure where is the best uh, uh, level that would give us the optimal balance between the excess cost and the shortage cost. And why? Because there's a trade-off between these two costs, right? So when you want to um, decrease one, the other one, the probability that the other one would be uh, encountered gets higher and vice versa. And this trade-off is what underlies uh, the single period model, as we're going to see in the next uh, slide.